Well, in the last uh, 24 hours, and you may have noticed that there's been a lot of talk about the special prosecutor, uh, that is Kisi Ejabin. And so we are looking at the Kisi Ejabin effect, um, and largely because of the statement that we've seen uh, from the uh, La Bianca. La Bianca has been one of those much talked about issues that the special prosecutor has investigated. But before this, you may have noticed in the headlines that in the last two weeks generally, the special prosecutor has been talked about quite a lot. Even Martin Amidou had had calls to write about him and criticizing the work that he's done. And that's the former uh, special prosecutor, the first former prosecutor. So we decided tonight to really look into the work of the special prosecutor uh, in the, you know, since he was appointed, really, the new special prosecutor. So we are going to have a conversation. It nicely couched the special prosecutor versus corruption, the Ajabin effect, which really is, is the thing. As you may have, uh, you may recall, it was famously stated um, by the former uh, Auditor General that uh, when you fight corruption, corruption will fight you back. Is that what is really is happening? in the case of the special prosecutor. Is he coming up against corruption and who's going to win? So what do we know? As far as his own work is concerned, Kisi Jabin's work is concerned, we have a case of so many, um, I guess, incidents that he's looking into. Five major cases, 70 others at various levels of consideration. That, that's a lot on his plate, um, considering what he's doing. And a few of them include the Airbus uh, matter, which his predecessor, Martin Amidou began investigating banking and financial sector crisis, recruitment to uh, cadet officers, uh, training at the Ghana Police Academy, estate of Kojo Usifri, that is a John controversy. We have the Northern Development Authority's investigation uh, as well that he's looking into. Now, um, then this new kid on the blog, I'm talking about Kisi Jabin, uh, you know, causing a lot of stare indeed mainly in the last few uh, days has been because of his investigation that he's commenced into the suspected corruption and corruption-related offences in respect of auction sales of vehicles and other goods by the custom division of the GRA between the 1st of July 2016 and 15th August 2022. Now, he's given a special focus on what is happening at the port, and this is after he had done the you know, subject of the uh, La Bianca. And when he went to La Bianca, he found issues of influence peddling, but also, as you know, he, he got the, the La Bianca company to, you know, pay to the state more than a million CDs. Many said that was good. The first time the OSPs actually retrieved anything of substance is when Kisi Jabin went in there. But people associated with the La Bianca company or those who you know, work in that same environment, many of them have fought back quite vehemently in the last uh, you know, few weeks. You know, we've, we've seen the La Bianca company themselves, two weeks after that report was made public by the OSP, come out today with a very interesting statement that the influence peddling finding in the uh, SP's report is, is not accurate. It's, it's, they say they deny it completely. And in other words, it's false. And that the OSP has not written to them officially about this. In fact, they say that due uh, process and, and, and fair trial rules have been breached by the, the SP. But you have to ask the question, if this is really the case, why did they agree to make that 1 million CD payment? Is that an admission of, of wrongdoing. So we'll come to that when I talk to my guests. And then we've seen the Chamber of Freights and Trade also join in this conversation about, um, about the special prosecutor um, in, on, on this particular matter. And then the response from Martin Amidou, this for me was a major surprise, considering that this is Martin Amidou, the man who was the, uh, was the first special prosecutor writing Criticizing the work of his successor, um, uh, Kise Jabi, how, how much should we read into that? Knowing who Martin Amidou is, fighting or criticizing another anti-corruption officer. It, it's quite an interesting one. I found that very, very curious. And I would ask my guest how much he read into this when he issued that statement. Especially when those who have been accused and found culpable themselves had, you know, had paid money and also were fighting back to have Martin Amidou so jumping. But listen to his concerns. 
He said the report does not disclose commission of any corruption or corruption-related offenses by LaBianca. Does that suggest that Kisi Jabain was, you know, going beyond his mandate? Because that's what he's supposed to do. If there's no corruption or corruption-related offense, why did he investigate in the first place? And then the OSP's LaBianca report is hollow, without mandate, and unconstitutional. I guess that's a point that he was making there. I'll see what my guests agree uh, with this matter when we, when we return. I have all the guests who know this subject very well, but I, I really want to get your thoughts on it, it, all the talk that we've had, the, the, the headlines that the special prosecutor has grabbed over the last two weeks on, on, on many issues, the ports, the cars, etc. Is it properly earned? Is it justified? Is this something that should give us cause for jubilation in the fight against corruption? Or is this window dressing um, an initial stage of really something that doesn't go anywhere?